Hello and welcome to your explanation of how to use some of the resources when dealing with ArcGIS geodatabase topology, specifically the topology rules and how do you decide which rules you should put into the topology for the data that you have. So the resource you're looking at here on my screen is the same as the resource you have on Canvas. If you print it out, it turns into a multi-page 8.5 by 11 packet. This comes from an original wall uh, size poster that I had found online and I cut it into individual pieces so that I could have a desktop resource on paper to be able to look at to help me when I was working with topology professionally. So um, I, get, I provide it to you as well because I think it's a wonderful resource to have because there are lots of rules as you see here. There are many pages of rules and deciding which rules you should use with your data can get overwhelming. So I'm going to walk through how you can best use this resource in tandem with the other PowerPoint that I provided to you and that part two reading for topology, how to use those together to help you figure out which rules you should be setting up for your data. So let's start at the top of this document and you can see that there are some how to's on how to read the diagrams. So the first thing I want to point out is that some rules are going to have a single icon here. That icon means that that rule is for a single data set. So it's only looking at the features inside of a single data set and how they behave. So one data set would be associated with that rule. You'll see other rules that have an icon of two icons with a colon in between. And that means that that rule is set up for two feature classes, how two data sets are behaving together. Now you'll also notice that these icons represent different geometries. So this icon right here represents a polygon data set. This down here at the bottom of the page, that's a representation of a point data set. And if we move forward here, we can see that there is an icon that represents for a line data set. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about how we can use these icons here just to try to figure out what rule we should choose for some data. So let's talk about an example. So let's say that we have a single polygon data set um, that I really just want to find out if there are any gaps and overlaps between these polygons that I think should be contiguous and adjacent. So using just these icons, I can pare down the rules that are available in the system for single polygon data sets. So I know my data set is a polygon, so I know that I'm looking for rules that have this particular icon. I know that it's a single data set, so I know that I'm also looking for rules that only have one of these icons. So if I go through and I sift through these rules, I can see, okay, on this first page, I see two polygon rules for single data sets. If I flip through the rest of them, I don't see any other rules that have a single polygon icon. So I can come back to this first page and know, okay, in the ArcGIS system, if I have a single polygon data set, I only have two rules that I can set up. I have a must not overlap and a must not have gaps rule. So those would be the two rules available to me to um, address my data. Now, if I were to set these rules up for my data, notice how in the description of these rules, they talk about what the errors might look like in these, two, in these two rules. So you can use these graphics to help you figure out what those error shapes might look like. So a lot of times there are predefined fixes associated with rules. And in the PowerPoint slides I provide you in your part two reading, I, dic I tell you what some of those predefined fixes are. Sometimes those predefined fixes are exactly what you want. Sometimes they do not do what you need. And in those cases, you just use your editing skills available to you that you already know, and you edit your data so that it looks and it operates the way you need it to. The key here is remembering that the topology and the validation process of, of validating your data against the topology only finds the problems for you. Then you have to fix them. So it's not it's not going to automatically fix them um, out of the box. Sometimes you have to actually edit your data in conjunction with maybe some predefined fixes after it finds the problem. All right, so that's a simple one where we have a single data set. But let's talk through another data, another scenario. Let's say we have two polygon data sets, um, states and counties. And we know that our states and counties should act as a nested egg, right? So all of our counties should fit nicely within the boundary of our state. So that boundary of the state should also mimic the outer boundary of all of those counties along the edge. So we would use this handout to find any of our rules that have 
icons for two data sets, right? Because we have states and counties, so we're working with two data sets. We also know the geometry of those. They're both polygons, so we're looking for rules that have two polygon icons at the top. So if we go through our list here, we can see that there's some on this page. If we keep going, there's none there, there's none there, and there's none there. Okay, so we go back to that second page, and we can see on this page that there are five rules here that are associated with two polygon data sets. Now, you'll, as you read through these on this screen and in this packet and also in the PowerPoint slides, you'll notice that the nuanced difference between a lot of these five rules is pretty small and it can get a little confusing. And I just want you to know that you're not alone in that confusion. Each of these rules are meant to pull out very specific scenarios, but sometimes those scenarios are somewhat the same as another rule. So in these types of scenarios in the professional world, what we often do is any rule that we think might be associated with our situation, we add it to our topology and we validate it and we go to look where that rule is broken to see if it's actually finding errors in our data or if it's just finding places that, ah, yeah, it breaks the rule, but that's how my data is. If that's the case over and over with a specific rule, you can always go back to your topology and get rid of that rule if it's not helping you at all. But sometimes duplicating across these rules will help you find different scenarios that are actually causing problems with your data, and each of these rules just come at those scenarios slightly different. So it's always good and always fine to put more rules in your topology. And then if after the fact, if you notice they're not finding the errors that you need them to find, you can just remove them. But the biggest thing I want you to remember is that you're not alone with some of these rules that you that kind of seem like they're the same concept, only slightly different, and you would have a hard time describing how they're slightly different. You are not alone. That is how things are in the real world as well. All right, so let's see here. I also want to point out that there is a logic to the order of these icons. So whichever icon comes first means that the rule is from the point of view of that data set. So let's just talk about boundary must be covered by since it's here and at the top right that we're looking at. So this particular rule is looking at the situation from the point of view of the polygon. And it is saying that if you use this rule, all of your polygon boundaries must be covered by lines from another data set. In any place that you have a polygon boundary that's not covered by a line from another data set, it's going to highlight that polygon boundary as the error. It's not going to highlight in the line data set that it's missing things. It's going to highlight in the polygon data set that there are boundaries missing lines in the other data set. So that's important to understand. And that, that kind of point of view logic drives what your error shapes are going to be as well. So there's multiple rules here that, have, that go from the point of view of one geometry to another, and then you can flip it around. And you'll notice sometimes that there's a, another rule that flips that point of view that makes it from the point of view of the other geometry so that you can catch it in both of the data sets. So really the key here is understanding these icons how you can use them um, if you're dealing with single data sets, multiple data sets, knowing that you have rules for points, lines, and polygons. You can use this reference to read through how each of these rules are evaluating your data. And you can also go to the PowerPoint slides on Canvas to get a little bit more information and some different graphics that show you how these rules are behaving.